Hey everybody, this is Russ from Metro Game Core. So I've had this Steam Deck for several months now, and one of the things that first interested me about this is that it has a desktop mode. When I first got it, I thought to myself, man, it would be really cool to use this as a Linux PC as well. But I gotta be honest, I almost never use the desktop mode. Part of that has to do with the fact that I don't really like using these mouse pads for mouse functions, I just never really got used to them. And so this idea of being able to use this as like a portable Linux desktop that I can use on travel and things like that, it just never really came to fruition. I guess at the end of the day, if I really wanted to, I could bring a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse with me, but then I'd just be squinting at that small screen anyway. And so in today's video, I'm going to present a different solution. And this thing is called the NEX Dock. And it's kind of hard to describe, but this is a laptop that is not actually a laptop. This is literally just a screen and a battery and a keyboard. But what that means is that it can transform anything you plug into it into a working laptop. And so if we're going to stick to the example of a Steam Deck, you can literally just plug this thing right up and start using it immediately as a laptop computer. And the ability to be able to use this on travel is just kind of a game changer to me. I don't have to bring a mouse or a keyboard or an extra screen. Not only that, the monitor has its own battery, which can last up to 12 hours, which is pretty impressive. And so in today's video, what I want to do is take a look at this NEX Docs in the context of using it with a Steam Deck. And we're going to test it with a bunch of other devices to see how it looks with some other use cases as well. And so without any further delay, let's jump into it. Okay, first thing, you know, the NEX dock has been around for a while. I actually saw it on a YouTube video about a year ago. And initially it was meant to be plugged in with certain smartphones, but the whole idea of being able to use it with a Steam Deck is a new one. Now, just to briefly go over the specs, this is a 13.3 inch LCD display with a 1080p resolution, 60 by 9 aspect ratio. It also has a hefty 44 watt hour battery. And like I mentioned before, it can last up to 12 hours, which is really impressive. It has a variety of ports, including a micro SD card slot. We'll go over that here in a second. But I do want to make note of the four speakers it has inside, and it weighs about two and a half pounds altogether. So now let's talk about price. This is $350 and it ships out of California. Now the first thought I had was, man, for $350 I could just buy a Chromebook and use that as a laptop. And you totally could do that. But the idea here is a little bit different. For example, if you have a smartphone you've already spent like say $1,000 on it, wouldn't it be nice to be able to use that as well? So if you're on travel or whatever, you can then answer emails and things like that from your phone but with the convenience of a big screen and a keyboard. And of course the Steam Deck concept will be the exact same thing you'll have a full-fledged desktop mode that you can use with a laptop. And then of course, unlike a real laptop, you can just plug in other devices to take advantage of that big screen. So if you brought a Nintendo Switch or a retro device that has HDMI out, you could then use it on this screen as well. So I think when it comes down to price, yes, $350 is a lot, and it is comparable to a cheap laptop. But if I had to summarize that with one sentence, I would say that the next dock gives you less, but also more. It gives you less in the fact that it is not a standalone laptop, but it opens up a whole world of possibilities when it comes to productivity with the devices you already have. Now, as far as whether or not that's justified with a $350 price, I'll let you be the judge. Either way, let's move on to the unboxing. Now, like I mentioned, the company ships these out of California. Inside the box, you're going to get an instruction guide. It has just kind of a breakdown of each of the components. Further inside, you'll get your USB cable for video connection, as well as a USB-C to USB-A adapter because the next dock does not have a USB-A port. Also inside, you'll find a USB-C cable for the charging brick, which is this one here. Now this brick will charge the NEX dock itself directly. It is a 20 watt brick. And then in turn, it will charge the device that you have plugged in. And then finally, we have a mini HDMI to regular HDMI cable. Now let's take a look at the device itself. And honestly, it just looks like a laptop. It has a space gray color to it. It reminds me a lot of a traditional MacBook. And of note, it does pick up fingerprints pretty easily. Now let's take a look at each of the sides. On the back here, you can see it has a dual hinge system. And then on the left, we have our mini HDMI port as well as your device USB-C input port. So this is where you'll plug in the Steam Deck or a smartphone or whatever. Now on the opposite side, near the front of the device, we have a USB-C port. This is gonna be for data only. And then we also have a power button, a micro SD card slot, which is super handy. And then also the USB-C charging for the brick itself. And finally, it has a headphone jack here at the back. 
On the bottom of the device, not a lot to see here, just some screws as well as some rubber feet to keep it nice and planted. Okay, so that's the outside. Let's take a look at what it is like on the inside. And much like with the MacBook exterior, it feels a lot like a MacBook on the inside as well. First things first, those keys remind me a lot of the butterfly switch keys or whatever they're called on the Macs nowadays. And we'll test those out here in a second, but first let's look at the other stuff. Up top we have a power indicator light as well as the four speakers. And then combined with the function keys, you have a bunch of hotkeys as well. Things like a battery indicator, volume up and down, screen brightness, pause and play, and so on. To me, this looks like a traditional laptop keyboard setup. We have that 75% size right here, and some of those other function buttons here on the right. Now, just given the angles of what I do when I record, I'm not really able to show you the screen while I'm typing, but I did do some type testing and it seemed fine. I'm pretty familiar with Mac keyboards, and so in that sense, it felt a little bit loose in the keys themselves, but otherwise no big complaints. Now the travel on these are pretty low, you know, just as expected with a laptop, but overall I didn't find any glaring issues. It's definitely not the best keyboard I've ever used, but nothing that I would specifically complain about. But speaking of which, now let's talk about the trackpad here. As far as glide, I think it's okay, there's a little bit of grippiness there, but no complaints. However, the clicking on the trackpad is pretty terrible, especially near the center of the button. Now luckily you can just tap on the trackpad lightly with your finger and it will register as a mouse click, and that's what I ended up doing here when I was using it. But the actual clicking itself feels very rough and cheap. Here, let's do a close-up so you can get a better idea, and I'll stop talking for a second. So yeah, it has a weird double click to it, the sides of it have a different sound and also a different amount of pressure required, and clicking the trackpad from the top of the trackpad is almost impossible. So in the end I just adapted to using light taps with the trackpad, no problems there. But overall if I had to judge this I would say it's like a 3 or a 4 out of 10. Okay, now let's fire it up, take a look at the screen, and then also the menu options as well. Now this is a touch screen, and so in order to access the menu you just swipe down with two fingers. And here you can adjust things like the volume and the backlit brightness right here on the left. At full brightness it is pretty good, but it does make the display a little bit washed out as we'll see here later in the footage. But I do like the fact that the backlit display does go down quite a lot when you get it down to zero. Let's also take a second to look at some of the other menu options. The third one from the left is sharpness and the fourth one is brightness of the display. These two can only be adjusted when something is plugged in and I found that keeping them at the middle setting seems to be the best. Next on the right you have the option of choosing between USB Type-C or HDMI for the video input, and then also to the right of that you can choose whether or not to charge the device when it's hooked up. And finally below that you can mute the volume or you can toggle on the screen rotation. And finally there is a submenu where you can toggle on HDR, and then also you can manually adjust the color balance as well. And so I found that it's pretty handy that it's there, but I didn't really find a need to actually make a manual adjustment. So yeah, overall I think the screen is pretty good, the amount of bezels here on the sides are nice, but obviously it does have that chin at the bottom. You can definitely find laptops that are thinner than this, or have a better resolution, or maybe even better colors and brightness too. But I think overall it gets the job done. Now for those of you who are expecting to potentially use this with travel, let's do some measurements. So it's a little bit over 14 inches, maybe 14 and a half diagonally, and it is 12 inches by 8 inches if you go by width and height. And yeah, just to verify here, the usable screen here is a little bit over 13 inches. In a more practical comparison, it is about the same width as a Steam Deck. Now obviously the Steam Deck is going to be a lot thicker and also not quite as tall, but if you are planning on traveling with this, it's good to know that they are about the same width altogether. Now to switch over to desktop mode, in case you don't know how to do that, you would press the Steam button here, then go into Power, and then select Switch to Desktop. It's surprisingly fast how quickly it'll switch over to the desktop mode, and just like that, you're in. So now let's take a quick trip over to the studio so that we can get a little bit more of a 3D dimension going here and actually test this thing out. I'm going to take the power brick and I'm going to plug it directly into the device, and of course we're going to start with the Steam Deck. Now before we get into the desktop mode side of things, I do want to see how it is when we actually just use it as a gaming device as well. First thing I noticed when I plugged it in is that it did give me a warning that this was a slow charging input. So I would not expect this thing to fully charge up your Steam Deck as you're using it, but at the very least it should maintain your battery level or at least give it a trickle charge. Now when it comes to actually gaming on this thing, you've got a couple options. For example, you could just use the Steam Deck and the controls right there on the device. 
or you could connect a Bluetooth controller like I am here and just kind of have an impromptu gaming console. Either way, this worked out great. It scaled up to 1080p and played just fine. And like we kind of saw earlier, you know, using desktop mode like this, it is just fine. I'm just browsing through the app store right now because I really don't know how to use this thing yet. But for those of you who do already use Linux, you probably know exactly what you're going to do with this anyway. Either way, it's a nice confirmation here that yes, it works just fine. In fact, as I was using it, I had a really hard time remembering that I had this Steam Deck plugged into this. Something about it just kind of convinced my brain that no, this is a real laptop. You're not using a Steam Deck, it's just on this thing. And so yeah, I think in that regard, it just works. Now, I haven't done a lot of traveling over the past few years, but before that, I used to be on the road about half the time. And funny enough, I never had a laptop during any of that time, but I had a lot of travel-based solutions. For example, I would bring a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse to use with my iPad, or in a pinch, I would connect them to my phone. And to be honest, none of those solutions ever worked really well. Generally, I could answer a couple emails, maybe do some light text editing, but that was about it. This device, on the other hand, was a completely different experience. It just felt like using a regular computer. But the nice thing is, I didn't have to buy a computer to do that. After all, the Steam Deck itself is a PC. Now, one quick interlude that I forgot to do while in the studio is to verify that yes, it does have a touchscreen function and it does work when you plug in a USB-C device like this Steam Deck. But a couple thoughts on that. First, it makes the panel wobble a lot, so it kind of made me a little bit nauseated. And number two, I'm not sure if you would use the touchscreen at all because you have the trackpad, which is kind of the primary reason for using a laptop setup like this. So yes, touchscreen will work, but I'm not sure you're going to want it. Okay, moving on, let's try a couple other devices. We'll start with the AYN Odin. This is an Android-based device, so it should just function like an Android tablet. And yeah, sure enough, after plugging it in, I did have to reboot the device, but after that, everything worked great. It even went into a proper mouse mode and everything. So again, just like with the Steam Deck, you could use this as a portable gaming rig, or you could also use it as a productivity tool if you wanted as well. One other function I thought would be pretty handy if you were using an iPhone or an Android or an Android-based tablet like the AYN Odin is that you could use it for game streaming. And so as an example here, let's boot up the Xbox Game Pass and I'm just going to jump right into a game. Again, this is streaming from the cloud here. And so yeah, in general, you wouldn't need to have a device that is capable of playing Doom Eternal, even though the Steam Deck is. Instead, you just need to plug in something that's capable of using the Xbox Game Pass app. All right, let's try a couple other devices. We'll do a retro handheld that has an HDMI out. This is the Ambernic RG552. Now this has a mini HDMI input, so I'm going to have to use an adapter here, going mini HDMI to regular HDMI, then regular HDMI to the mini HDMI of the dock. That's definitely a mouthful, but it is pretty easy to set up. Now I'm using the Jealous firmware here, and for some reason it rotated everything as I plugged it into HDMI. And after filming this section, I did go home and test it with other devices like the RG353P, still using Jealous, and it worked just fine. So it might just be a bug specifically for the firmware on the RG552. Okay, next let's try out the Nintendo Switch. I'm going to use the OLED edition here, and this one connected right up, no problems whatsoever. And nice thing about this setup is that it does charge the switch as it's going. I'm not sure if this is a quick charge or anything, but at least it works. And when it came to gameplay and everything else, all that was great. It's kind of a blast to be able to see a Nintendo Switch game playing on a laptop like this outside of emulation. Either way, yeah, this totally worked fine. Anyway, those are just a few of the use cases that you could use with this device. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to call it the NEX dock or the Next dock. Let's just go with Next dock from here on out. Either way, I think it's time to do the pros and cons. We'll start with what I like. Number one, this feels like a legit laptop. It doesn't have that luxury quality of something like an Apple product, but it is pretty close. Probably my favorite thing about it is the battery life. This thing will give you upwards of 12 hours of battery. It'll just last all day, which is pretty awesome. Additionally, it will power devices. I think it'll do great with a phone, but when you get something bigger like a Steam Deck, it's only going to give a trickle charge. And probably most importantly about this whole thing altogether is that it unlocks a bunch of new use cases. I finally now have a reason to use Steam Deck in desktop mode, and you could plug in your favorite gaming console on the go to be able to play this on a larger screen. Another use case that would be kind of neat is that you could just take a fire stick with you while on travel and just plug it directly into the laptop and be able to stream stuff right then and there. Either way, there's just a ton of possibilities with having an HDMI input like this. It honestly just makes me wish that laptops in general had an HDMI input overall. Okay, now let's talk about the things I don't like about the next dock. Number one are those trackpad clicks. It's just really annoying to have to push down so hard 
and the fact that it's super loud in some areas and not in others, and very hard to push down on near the top. This is all mitigated by lightly tapping on the trackpad, but I wish I didn't have to do that in the first place. Next, the screen panel itself is touchscreen, but it's also very wobbly, and that's not a great combination. In general, I just found I didn't want to touch the touchscreen at all. And finally, the screen quality on this is not the best. I kind of wish there was a saturation option within the menu, and honestly, the HDR just looked the same as with it off or on. So I think if you were going to use this to like watch movies or something like that, it's not going to look that great. But of course, when it comes down to it, this is going to be ideal in a travel situation, and when you are traveling, there are compromises to be made. The real question here is whether or not the amount of functionality you get here is going to be worth the asking price of $350. I think for me personally, when it came to purely using this for gaming, something like the Nintendo Switch or just the Steam Deck gaming site as well, then I would probably just opt for a larger portable monitor, which is going to be a lot cheaper. But if you want to use something like a smartphone or a tablet for more productivity minded things, or you want to transform the Steam Deck into a full on PC, then I think those are great use cases. And so let me know what you think in the comments below. Is this something you would consider when going on travel or not? And I'm very interested in hearing your take as well. As always, thank you for watching and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful. And we will see you next time. Happy gaming.